Everything about Rolex bears the imprint of one exceptional person, a historical watchmaker that has reigned both land and sea. Rolex is a name that is synonymous with luxury. It is a well-known name that is linked to precision, quality, and creativity. However, did the company grow from being started by an orphan to the billion-dollar powerhouse that it is today? In today's video, we'll delve deep into the history of Rolex, 108-year-old watch brand that conquered the world. Hans Wilsdorf and his brother in law Alfred Davis founded the company in 1905. Marking the start of Rolex history, the company was founded in England at first, but soon after it moved to Switzerland, Hans had the idea and Alfred had the money. Working together seemed like a no-brainer. Surprisingly, Hans was neither English nor Swiss, and watchmaker didn't seen in his family. Hans was born in 1881 in Kullenbeck, northern Bavaria. He was the middle of three children born into a prosperous middle-class family. His grandparents were wealthy, and his parents ran an ironmonger in Kullenbeck. However, when Hans reached the age of 12, both of his parents died. Suddenly after that, his aunt and uncle took custody of the kids and they promptly sent them to a boarding school in Kohlberg. Hans finally graduated from school after many unhappy years and at the age of 19, he moved to Switzerland. Finally graduated from school and at the age of 19, he moved to the Show de France in Switzerland in search of a better life back. Then the Show de France was a premier watchmaking location. This made it the ideal place to gain exclusive experience and it was here that Hans dived into the world of watches for the very first time after working for a pearl merchant. He got a job with a growing watch company called Kuna Corden. The reason why he was hired despite not having any watchmaking experience well he could read and write English and he could therefore answer correspondence from the British Empire in America while working for Kuna Corden. Hans became fascinated with watch movements and their accuracy and this was the beginning of his lifelong passion after working for Kuna Carton. Hans felt it was time to start his own career in the watch world. He moved to London and found a suitable partner for his project. His brother-in-law, Alfred Davis. Together they founded Wilsdorf and Davis in 1905. By now, Hans was 24 years old. The company originally imported inner watch parts, housed them in uh, British cases and sold them to jewelers through this initial success. The duo saw the potential for developing their own brand. And three years later, they secured the Rolex name. Hans wanted a short name that would be both easy to remember as well as easy to say in any language. While the brand originally started in London, they quickly opened an office in Switzerland and Hans began dreaming of wristwatch that was elegant, durable and precise. When Rolex became the first wristwatch to bear the Swiss certificate of chronometric precision, but as a perfectionist, Hans didn't stop there. He wanted his watches to be both precise and durable above all. He wanted Rolex to be known around the world. This would require some serious thinking outside the box. Hans knew how to rescind his inventions to the public in the best possible way and some unusual stunts took place over the next few decades. It all started in 1926 with the introduction of the waterproof oyster case. The innovative case was supposed to be water and dust proof and they put it to the test by giving one to Mercedes Glides. Mercedes was a British professional swimmer who set out to be the first woman to swim across the English Channel and Hans made her wear the original oyster during her daring. 
Fit Mercedes record attempt was foiled during to the poor weather she was rescued after spending more than 15 hours in the icy waters, but her Rolex was completely unharmed and despite hours of exposure to cold sea water, it had kept accurate time. The long and difficult swim received widespread acclaim to increase publicity. Rolex placed fish tanks in store windows with the oysters submerged to the demonstrate its waterproof qualities the entire world was impressed and gradually even the most unexpected characters were spotted with uh, Rolex on their wrist. While Rolex has always been at the forefront of technology innovation, it was not nearly the status symbol it is today in the 1960s. A Rolex was primarily a functional tool rather than a quality so hence ignored all his critics and took all of the company's money to make one of the largest orders of wristwatches ever booked at the time. He was buying everything that wristwatches would become the future of the watch markets. Everyone thought he was crazy and even his business partner. Wasn't sure it was a great idea, but it was hand reportedly met with many different watchmakers who were considered masters of the craft and tried to learn at least one lesson from each of them. Hans then used an old connection from uh, when he would worked in Switzerland to import Swiss made mechanism so they could begin creating high quality wristwatches. Of course, Hans knew quality uh, alone wasn't going to be enough. And that brand recognition was going to be the most crucial element of all. And that all began with having a memorable name. Now, the origin of Rolex's name is a slightly curious Hans claim that he initially tried combining random letters of the alphabet in every possible way to come up with hundreds of unique names. But one of them felt quite right. But then Hans said while he was riding to work one day that Jenny whispered in his ear the name Rolex. Now, regardless of where the name really came from, it was perfect. Rolex is short and memorable but also easy to pronounce in any language. Plus, Rolex felt like it had style and authority to it, and this hand started printing it on the dials of all his watches, which also helped build up brand recognition. In fact, a few years later, they changed the entire company name to Rolex Watch Co. Limited. Very quickly, their new wrist watches began to sell well. In 1910, Rolex became the first wristwatch to be awarded the, the Swiss Certificate of Precision. And then in 1914, the British Cope Observatory awarded the Rolex watch. A class A rating which no other watch of that kind had been given before. Rolex was starting to develop an association with quality which helped attract even more sales. But then, in 1914, the First World War broke out by this point. Rolex headquarters in London had more than 60 employees on its payroll and become the export center to every market the company sold to. However, during the war, Germany became Britain's enemy and since Hans was of German descent with a German name and a German accent, tensions began to rise not just that, but the British government imposed the wartime import duty of 33 on all luxury goods. So to avoid any conflict and to get some major tax benefits, Hans decided to move Rolex headquarters from England to Switzerland, which was neutral during the war, and thus whilst many watch companies went bankrupt during World War I. For Rolex, it was actually a very successful time because their worst watches became a favorite amongst the military for their reliability. Rolex fast forward 
1954, it became the first watch to display two time zones. In 1956, the day-date model was introduced as the first watch to display both date and weekday on the dial. In 2012, the Rolex became the first wristwatch to have a common bezel made for various uses alongside Rolex. Uh, Wilsdorf also introduced a high-quality but less expensive brand known as Tudor. This company was founded in 1946. Wilsdorf continued in the business of watchmaking until he died in 1960. Thanks for watching this video to the end. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, do that also, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers!